So I'm starting the motion work, uh, but as I said before uh, earlier video that we've got a problem here and I'll try to explain quickly what that is. So the way this motion work is set up is very odd because usually you take it off of one arbor and then you put gear ratios in to give you a minute hand and an hour hand. But this is actually using two arbors. It's going to use this arbor. There'll be a pinion on this that I need to mount and that's going to drive a wheel that is going to give us the hours. And then there's going to be another pinion on the arbor that's back here, the fourth arbor. And that pinion is going to drive a wheel that is going to give us the minutes. So if you can see there's spacing between this and this is set by this train. So I cannot move these two arbors, but I've got two different gear ratios in front of us. And I'll explain how the formula works, but I know right now exactly that from here to here is 2.055 inches. And that's theoretical on the spacing of all of these uh, different wheels. The way you figure out your spacing, let me try to get the camera on here so we can see it clearly. It's a very simple formula that works out quite nicely. So the formula is this, n plus n divided by two times m for the modules equal the distance between the centers. n is how many uh, gears on one and on the other. So for the minute wheel, we've got one wheel has 35 teeth, another has seven on the pinion divided by two times 0.8 equals 16.8 millimeters. So those two wheels are supposed to be 0.6614 apart. We do the same for the hour hand, and that's supposed to be 1.433 apart. Add these two together, and in theory, they should be 2.0944 inches apart, the centers of those two different arbors. But when you look at the design, uh, the way the other train lays out is 2.055, which to me makes perfect sense because these things aren't made to be perfect spacing. That's typically why you always use a gear ratio off of one arbor. So we've got a 39 thousandths uh, error built into the design of this clock. And that is substantial. That's substantial when you're trying to mesh these gears. So what I did to try to deal with this uh, issue is I made these wheels uh, a little bit smaller diameter than they should be. These are a 0.8 module um, and these aren't cut to the theoretical. I cut these between the two wheels, they're 50 thousandths short. And remember I had a uh, 39 thousandths diameter. So using a depthing tool, um, the way that works is you can put these on here. I made this tool, it's a very simple tool. Um, this is adjustable, so you can move this in. You move these in, then I mark in DICAM, uh, the spacing to see how you can depth these. And it looks like it'll work. It looks like the amount I cheated uh, will give me the room I need uh, to space these on the front. I've got to remake um, this part here because this hole is not right. Um, this hole was done uh, based upon the drawing, and that drawing was off by around 200 thousands. Um, so lots of issues with the drawing and concept that's good, just looks like missed some details uh, when doing this layout. But we'll get to work and I'll show you how these look, hopefully if uh, we can get this running. So let's take a look at this motion work. Uh, things came out well. You can see uh, I've got the hour wheel here mounted. Um, hour handle get mounted off of this. The minute handle get mounted on this threaded rod. But the motion came out uh, very nicely. Um, those changes I made in the spacing look like they work well. I've got a nice amount of freewheeling play. Uh, the other thing I did is I made an adjustment. So an issue with this clock is it would be impossible with the way it was set up to adjust the hands. They need to be independently adjusted. And once they're locked, they get locked in. So you need some kind of slip mechanism. A lot of times it's done with a spring uh, and it's only done on one hand because they're two joined together. Well, here we need to put it on each hand. So I did something unique. I'll show you a little bit uh, how we did it, but looks like things are working well. So let me show you how I put a clutch on these uh, minute wheel and uh, hour wheel. Is You can see this, it can turn. It's hard to see, but what it is, is I've got three neodymium magnets um, inserted into this uh, wheel. You can see it's on both sides. Um, and then I put a little piece of steel uh, on this arbor, just Loctite this in place. 
I blued it just so it gives a pretty cool look. But you see this will snap in and it locks that in place. It's concentric and a real nice solution. You can see I did the same thing on this other wheel, a little bit smaller, but exact same idea. Put that in place and now these two can turn. And this allows you to adjust that hour and the minute hand uh, by just turning the hands and you won't do any damage uh, to the clock. So a nice solution, I haven't seen it used uh, before. Uh, came up with this on a couple clocks ago, but it seems to work very well. And it worked out nice for this clock, especially with the uh, odd arrangement. So that's all we've got this week. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start uh, working on the perpetual calendar aspects, the day, uh, the date and the month train. Uh, gotta make a bunch of plates. So we'll come back to you. Uh, hopefully we'll maybe get the day train uh, worked out to see how that uh, how that goes. It's gonna be interesting. The plans I've got in the book um, don't really tell the whole story, so a lot of figuring uh, need to be done, but should be fun. So please subscribe, send me any comments you'd like. Um, pretty interesting build, and we'll keep going at it. Thanks, everyone. Take care.